Let's start work with the historic data set provided by Global Surface Water. Specifically, we will work with the yearly data sets. Back to the presentation. One of the data sets that you get with the Global Surface Water is you get the monthly water history. You have, this is an image collection containing over 400 images. You have one image, one global image for every month between 1984 to 2021. So you can select any month and you'll see an image with, uh, showing where there was water or not. Uh, the idea for this layer is uh, you can get a month to month change. And if you want to know when does something happen, you can get at a more granular resolution. You know, somebody asked previously, how do I know when this uh, reservoir was constructed exactly? So you can go and check the monthly history and you'll see exactly when the water started appearing there. Uh, this data set is actually, uh, you need to be careful with this data set because Landsat, uh, there was a time of 16 days. So there may be a month that there was only one observation at that location. And what if that observation was cloudy? Then means you have no observation for that month. So many times you load an image for that month and you say, oh, where did, where did my reservoir disappear? I expect to see water here, but there's no water because, well, there was no landsat collection or it was cloudy. So again, uh, for kind of mapping purposes, monthly data set is not really useful. Uh, if you really want to create a map, do analysis, uh, we would use the yearly data set. So you also get a yearly water classification history uh, where you take all images collected during a year and you know, composite them together and you have a year to year image. You now have a classification whether this a pixel was classified as a seasonal water or a permanent water, and you get this for every year. So you have 38 images in your collection. And now you can go and pick up images for a year, load it, and you'll see whether this pixel was permanent, seasonal, or not water. And then this, in my experience, is the most useful data set that I end up using all the time whenever there's a question, when was this you know, uh, pond constructed? Or what happened between these two years? And I'm trying to study changes between you know, 2000 and 2020. I want to know what happened. You can load those two images and work with that. So let's uh, go back to the code and see how we can work with this data set. So we search for global surface water. We have this data set, GRC yearly water classification history. Let's open up the data description page. This one is an image collection. So again, mental shift, we were working with images, now we have collections. This one goes from 1984 to end of 2021. You can see the description. Each image in the collection has this band called water class, only one band. And the water class band has three pixel values, one, two, or three. So one means this was not water, two means it was seasonal water, three, that means it was permanent water. Let's work with this data. We have data set imported. I'm just going to print it. And you can see this is an image collection having 38 images. And you can see images for each year. This is the water history from 1984, 85, all the way till 2021. And we can select in any one of the images, load it, and you will see how was the surface water in that year. And this is more reliable because you have multiple observations throughout the year and you'll generally get a pretty reliable surface water observation. So let's say I want to uh, see the surface water map for year 2020. So I want to see how was the surface water in 2020. So we want to do this. So first we need to filter a collection. GSW yearly. We want to apply a filter now. What filter would I use? And we can give a start and end date. Let's just try this out. So we'll say, I want to do 2020, 01, 01. End date, it should be 2021, 01, 01. Remember, end date is exclusive, so we won't get this. Let's print this uh, filtered collection. And you can see we have selected one image. So this filtered down to just one image of 2020. So our filter worked and we got the data set. If I look at the original image collections, 
each of the image has some properties. So this is the metadata that comes with each image. And they also provide one metadata called year, which is the name of the year that this data set presents. So we should use the date filter or alternatively, we can just use the metadata filter and say, I want to select the date where uh, the year property is equals 1984. This also works. Remember this works because the provider provides you with a year property. If it was not there, then you'll have to use the date filter. So you can check the metadata that's offered. And if it's there, this is just a little simpler, shorter. So we can use that. Okay, so we have filtered down a collection of 30 images and now have a image collection with just one image. I want to see this image, but it's still a feature image collection. How do I turn this into an image? So if I want to just say water 2020, how do I turn this image collection with one image into an image? One option would be we can do compositing, right? We can just do a composite. This is how we had done before. If you do medium, well, there's only one value to be used. So it'll be the same value. So we can use that. But this seems like it's not correct, right? We don't really want medium. We just want that one image value that's out of this. For this exact purpose, Earth Engine provides you with a helper function called dot first. In Earth Engine, when you want to extract one specific image from a collection, the process is you first apply a filter, so there's only one image left in your collection. And then you can run this function called dot first, which will then extract that remaining image into an image of its own. So see what happened? We started with 38 images, we applied a filter, and there was only one image left. And then we call dot first, you get an image. Now that we have an image, that image was taken out of the collection. There is no dot second, dot third, because the purpose of dot first is to be able to extract one image. So many people ask me this question who are kind of really want to do how, what they've been doing on the desktop, say, how can I just get one image? I want this specific image of this date from Landsat. How do I get that? Well, the process in Earth Engine is you start with your Landsat collection, apply a date filter for one day. You can say start date 4th Jan and date 5th Jan. And then you'll get this one image that was collected over a region and then you call dot first and then you have an image. Right, so filter and dot first is the process to get the one image. Now uh, this question is, uh, it's, this process is not clear. Uh, when you apply a filter, you always get an image collection back. So you can see the GSWLE was an image collection. When you apply a filter, you still get an image collection. This image collection has only one image. You can see there's only one image left, but it's still an image collection. You can't use Boolean operators. You can't use your image function because it's an image collection. So we say, I have this collection having one image. I want to take this one image out of this and use that image. And that's why we need to call dot first to convert feature this image collection into an image. So we have our image. Uh, let's visualize this uh, where you, know, you can see the different pixel values. Let me just add it to the map first just to see uh, what it looks like. You can see it's not blue because you can see some gray here. If I inspect it, you'll see that the water class value is zero. If I click somewhere else, it's some other water class and so on. So what I want to do is I want to go back to the metadata and say what I'm, what we want to collect here. So I can say, okay, this water class band has three values and now I want to select the specific value. So let's just go and say, I want the water so uh, this will be, I will just name it as water image 2020. And now I'm just gonna extract the water from 2020. I'll just take my water image and then select the pixel values, which are seasonal or permanent water. So two or three pixel values, two or three. So I'll say equal to two or three. So let's say we can use our Boolean operators to combine this and say, I want all pixel values which are two or three. And now we have our water. And we can just visualize this. So I'll just do my whisperance.
So we have a binary image, water versus non-water, and we can add this. Sir, uh, you need to change the year in the filter. Okay, thank you. And that's why this showed up as gray because there was no water here in 2020. This reservoir was constructed in later. It was water in 1984. So let's see this here. And, and now we have the surface water map. Uh, maybe let's just self mask it. So I only see the white pixels. So now we have a surface water map of how the globe looked like in 2020 with all the surface water around. And if you go to any part of the world, it's a global image where you'll be able to see the surface water as of 2020 detected from Landsat satellite. Uh, you also had another question on, will this continue to be updated? Uh, uh, yes, all the GRC data sets should be updated in due course. So question on, is it possible to compute the area covered by new permanent water? Yes, area computation is coming soon. You can compute area of all kinds, the total water, the water that changed from one class to another and so on. Uh, at the end of today's session, I will show you a script based on this data set that uh, you can run it anywhere and you'll see the surface water area for your chosen water body change over the past 40 years. And you'll see a nice graph, right? So we have the script ready. I will just show you so you can see how it happens. But area computation will learn next week. So once you learn that, you'll know, understand how the script works. Newer, if you want to know the in the current scenario, there are many data sets. So if you want to know, detect small streams, Sentinel-2 works. Uh, also, OpenStreetMap has done a fairly good job of delineating high-resolution satellite imagery. So they'll give you a much nicer uh, stream, uh, actual streams from high-resolution imagery. So if you just want river network, download the shape file from OpenStreetMap, and they'll get the, the current network. There is no data set that I know that exists at the global scale. Uh, before, like for historic data. Uh, there may be maps yeah. that you can digitize and use that from historic uh, okay. topographic maps. So in the past where I had to uh, do uh, projects where doing some change detection, you would obtain a historic topographic map where you can see all those details and you digitize those and extract those. Mm -hmm. So let's do an exercise to compare multiple water years. Big time, can you explain the exercise? Yeah. 